Oh, good morning, ladies and gents. Coconut shop here outside the kegerator. She's turned off for a clean. So we brought home the bag of flaked barley, which is probably no good. Uh, good for chicken food, though. And we've got some amenity hard-wearing lawn seed here and a bit of fertilizer. And that's to go on the newly leveled grass. Looks way better. I mean, we have gone with the slope of the ground, the landscape, if you like. So it's still got a little bit of a run to it towards the path. But it started initially, well, quite a mess. So Gemma's been raking the stones off over the past few days and walking up and down on it. But I thought I'd come out and give you an update on the chickens because they're being so noisy today. What's happening, girls? I hope you've laid like a really, really, really big egg. Oh, that's what they do look when they want picking up. Oh, do you want picking up, mister? Oh yeah, it's nice to see that they're using, they're utilizing all of the space as well. You know, I think you're one of my favorite ones, you. Mr. Black uh, Leg Bar. Right, let's have a look. Food level, fine. Egg level, oh yeah. I beg your pardon, madam. She's like, how rude. Water level, see the little blue? Press the wrong button then. There, look, the little blue marker. So that means there's still water in there. This is doing its job wonderfully. Oh look, he's come to have a look. She. So if we if we were to hang around for five minutes, we'd definitely get a little blue egg off that cream leg bar. I've been calling her a cuckoo moran. She's not. She's a cream leg bar. Shall we have a look in here? See if they've laid any eggs. Oh. What are you doing? Leave her alone. You bullies. Oi! Can you see him pecking her while she's trying to lay an egg? Her. Oh, I better shut the doors. Need to string a neck curtain up along the front of that so they get a little bit of privacy when they're laying eggs. <sighs> Reggie's in the window. Watching the chicks. Let's go and look at the chicks. Hello, ladies. Gemma's got one out. She's nursing it with a little bit of breast milk, aren't you, Gem? <laughs> so we've only got the four in here. But they grow in every day. Abigail, what are you watching? Are you teasing Reggie with cats? The sun is shining in the lovely courtyard. Here's the doors. Here's the brewery. <laughs> Here's the job that we left last night. Holy smokes. Yes. A little bit of curry for my lunch later on. Wow. Can't believe I was here till nearly nine o'clock last night, really. You forget, don't you? There's Risso over there. Ah, uh, right, I suppose I'd better come up with a solution to this staircase at some point today. Shouldn't be too difficult to bodge something together. Just maybe with the bits of timber that we've got left over from the partition wall. And get the tanks pushed back into place. That one's still got beer in it. I don't think that Pilsen is going to come of anything, to be fair, because of the yeast that I used. But we'll see. We'll see. I've ordered some more yeast and I can rebrew it. Uh, this sink needs to be put into storage. Eh? It's a nice sink. Kind of saving it in case we get another place. Uh, need a couple of legs putting in for the front. Drop the top on. Extend the handrail. Robert's your mother's brother, Fanny's your aunt. That job will be completed. 
Before I do that though, while I can gain access, I'm going to sling these cables across the back and into or under through there to where the glycol unit is and also the benefit of having this open on the back is we can gain access to the other glycol chillers under there they can just sit under there for the time being and uh, be wired up uh, as and when which <clears throat> is going to be probably a job that will take up quite a bit of my time today to get all these back in and operational. Need to obviously sort the power, need to spur off off of a socket, maybe that one. I think that should be alright. So that's a spur coming off of a ring main over there. So we should be fine to just pull that round the corner. They don't really take a lot of juice. So I could just probably extend this twin and earth or just take the front off and start again. We'll see. So I best get cracking like pet. It's not going to take itself for now, is it? No, it's not. Oh my goodness. Feels like quite a job. Still at it. What time is it? It's half past three. So, we're manufacturing a staircase to replace this bad boy. I was going to try and just patch this one up, but I've decided to pull it out and swap it over. Got rid of a load of junk from over here. Started moving some stuff, pulling all this stuff out. So, the staircase is completed. And it gives me access to get to all these racks to put the boxes and stuff in get all the tanks, uh, I can get to all the tanks, should I say, really quite easily, which is convenient. The only trouble is this one's just a little bit off the edge, but I think I'll cope with it. It's not too bad. This shelving's got to go, that sink's got to go outside, the can machine's got to be pushed into the corner, and so does the pilot kit. So we're going to find somewhere for these two things to live. Pilot kit, cask, can filler and can seamer. Three items are probably going to live. Well, they probably live up here at some point, I would imagine. We'll see. But we've, we're going to lose space effectively by putting three more cold rooms in. And I can fit another three, I've measured it up. So we've gained space by moving the fermenters across here. We're going to gain that bit of space, but we're effectively going to lose this bit of space that we're shutting off here. So, and of course, lose the space up here where we had the uh, the pilot kit. So we're no better off really, apart from three cold rooms. I'm sure, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. What I would like to do though. They sort this little kitchen area out, some cupboards up there, get everything tidied away. And there's a potential that the pilot kit could live under the stairs here. Or it could live under the stairs when we put steps on at the end of the new cold room. We'll see. Anyway, I'm building a staircase out of a couple of scaffolding boards and some offcuts of scrap. There she is. So, just got the stringers laid down. I'm not uh, rebating anything out because it's just a temporary structure. Though it could be up for the next 10 years. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm just going to pull the treads off the other staircase. I've managed to lose a few, so the original one would have had like 10, I think, or 12 treads on it. I've increased the distance between them, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 which means I only need to find two new treads and I've tied it up out here and I reckon that's one tread and if that's wide enough this should be fine because this is an oak board so although it's a lot thinner it should be strong enough and I'll put it at the bottom as well or fail that that'll work as a tread as well we can chop that scaff board down if I need to 
so yeah we're not going to be short of treads that's good news so I'm going to lift these stringers up and put them in position but first I have to yank out the old staircase right let's see if this fits just ignore the radio in the background oh come on I've just had to trim him down a little bit but I think yes there we go she's in that side she's in that side and we'll look level just need to add the uh, the treads now one sink in the yard there she is I've tidied up a lot out there five bags of wood to give to my mate for his log burner there we go look at all this lot we finally pretty much got there anyway so I've measured it out the doors are gonna basically come to this patch here and if I zoom out a little bit there's a massive space that will be the in fact, they're further back as well that way. So, cold room doors there. Uh, new staircase up. That will be moved on its side to run up sideways, I imagine, when we uh, extend. And then some of this stuff will be able to live under that staircase. Oh my goodness. What a day that's been, though. Managed to get the coolers wired up for... Uh, these five FEs, these three over here have their own chilly unit, so it's just a case of two pipes into each and a bit of lagging. As you can see, we've got some pipe work on the floor down here still. Figured out a new manifold, so I've placed the chilly unit that services what was tanks four and five here. This in the brown box and the AC unit down there at the back they service tanks 1, 2 and 3 that Maxi 310 is a spare and then under there we've got another spare Maxi 310 and three more Maxis so the two spares are what we use for the mobile bar when we, <laughs> when we can do it and the other three Maxis run one for each of these tanks here and then, of course, if one of them packs up, we just pinch one of these spares from the mobile bar set up and uh, substitute it out. In the future, though, I would like to get rid of all of these maxes and get a big cooler unit in, or possibly two big remote chillers, but I don't have the money to do that at the minute. Uh, and what I don't like about that idea is you lose a little bit of redundancy, so... If I've got one chiller for each tank <clears throat> and one chiller goes down, I haven't lost all my tanks. The others are still operational. Whereas if one main glycol cooler goes down, no cooling at all. So I like to have that redundancy there. The eagle eyed of you will have spotted. Uh, yeah, I am having myself a well deserved two 12 hour days. Over the weekend, beer, thank you very much. Good times. Oh, delicious. So, wow, look at it. Now it's all pushed to one side. It looks like a very functional space that I can see me enjoying using. And I, <laughs> I like the fact everything's on one side now. So, am I going to be able to brew tomorrow? Am I going to have time? We've still got all the glycol in these tubs. These two here need to go into those maxi chillers. And we've still got the uh, Chloroquest in these buckets, bleaching them out. But they actually look quite white in there now, so I think that might have done the job. All I need to do is effectively tip it and drain it away. The ball kettle's had a caustic, the HLT has had a caustic, that's full, 
Right, good thinking. So, if we are going to brew tomorrow, we aren't going to do it without any hot water, are we? No, that would be silly. So, we need to make sure that we've got the HLT on and that it's pulling power. It is 19 amps over each phase. And then I want to turn on the timer, which should be set. That's automatic. Let's check the program. Off at 8. So what we're going to do is clear that. We'll go back to the clock. Program. Program 1. We'll have it come on at 4 o'clock in the morning. Let's double check. Yeah, 4 o'clock. And then, boom, that'll come on. The lights will come on. I need the pump to recirculate so I'll close this and I'll turn on the HLT pump there she blows god it's a good job I remember how to brew isn't it so need to change the time on that that says 8 o'clock it isn't do I need to press and hold I don't know. Anyway, it makes a boring video, so I'll do that when I figure it out. But there we go. All cleaned up, ready to go for tomorrow's brew day. And during the brew day, I'll be doing some more cleaning if I get time. Insulate some pipes, put some more stainless steel together, that kind of thing. So, I'll pull the camera out and let you join me if you fancy it. We'll see you then. Cheers.